Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to start with something a little bit weird. A meatball. But not just any meatball. The mammoth meatball. The synthetically made meatball that allegedly is made from mammoth meat. Which was basically produced as a kind of a sensation piece, or clickbait, for a startup trying to create a really intriguing concept that we refer to as cultivated meat, or animal meat produced in a laboratory. Although to make this a little bit more sensational and to basically have everyone talk about it, they decided to produce something a little bit more extreme. Basically meat from an extinct animal. An animal that has not existed for at least a few thousand years. And so in this video, I wanted to briefly talk a little bit more about this, because despite this being somewhat clickbaity, it is still actually a really exciting concept and something that potentially might produce new technologies, helping us resolve several major problems on planet Earth. But this concept of artificial meat, or cultured meat is obviously not new. The mammoth meat is obviously new, but we'll talk more about this in a couple of minutes. First, I briefly wanted to discuss exactly how the scientists created this, and more importantly, discuss the history and where all of this is headed. And I guess to begin, well, because this is a meat bowl, this obviously requires meat. And the technology behind this engineering technique comes from earlier biological discoveries, specifically medical discoveries, in regards to tissue engineering. And specifically a technique that allows us to literally regenerate certain organs, even using the cells from the body of the person that needs that organ. Here's for example a picture of a regenerated human ear, with the main principle being pretty simple. By using various stem cells, it then becomes possible to reprogram these cells to produce something a little bit more specific. For example, we can create a tissue-engineered heart valve, like the one you see right here. And it would generally require only three components. The reprogrammed stem cells, some kind of a scaffolding in order to actually create the structure, and then a lot of additional biomolecules, such as growth factors, in order to create healthy, mechanically stable cells. And in theory, it's actually possible to pretty much create any human organ, as long as you have the right equipment, and as long as you can create the correct scaffolding, to then place those cells on in order to help them grow into a healthy organ. Now these are some of the more complex examples, I don't think this has actually been achieved yet, but simpler stuff is already possible. Which obviously makes this a really important breakthrough in the medical field. This is usually referred to as regenerative medicine, with the specific field of tissue engineering as essentially the biggest part of all of this. But the foundation of all of this is from what's known as cellular agriculture, or basically farming various cells reproducing them to really, really huge numbers, and then using them for some kind of a purpose. Now, previously, this was mostly used for medical purposes. But a few decades ago, back in 1990, FDA officially approved genetically engineered rennet, making it the first genetically engineered product specifically meant for the production of food. And only a decade later, in 2004, we already had the first startup, in this case, the one known as New Harvest, essentially trying to figure out how we can use cellular agriculture, okay, I'm gonna try this again, cellular agriculture, super hard word to pronounce, trying to reduce the amount of animals we use for meat by replacing the meat from those animals with what we now refer to as cultured meat, animal products that were actually created in a lab. With one of the more successful stories in the last decade being the one from 2013, the rarest, most expensive burger ever. Created from the meat, grown from a tissue, where approximately 20,000 very thin strands of muscle were placed next to each other to try to recreate the texture. But in this case, this cost over $300,000, and also took approximately two years to produce. And so back then this was more of a novelty, and thus most people kind of forgot about this over the years. But the technology did not stop. It kept evolving, the techniques kept getting better, and the scientists found new ways to create various types of artificial meat much, much cheaper than ever before. And even though this was actually quite expensive in the beginning, the reasoning behind this sort of makes sense. And it's not just because they're vegan or because they don't want to consume meat. It's actually because of modern agriculture. Since 1960s, in the last 60 years or so, the global meat consumption has actually doubled. And as a result, this also has dramatically increased the amount of various greenhouse gases, and in the process has also created some major concerns, both in terms of the safety of food and also the conditions on the planet. For example, approximately 15% of all of the global greenhouse gas emissions most likely comes from livestock. On top of this, modern techniques when it comes to, for example, raising cows, involve a lot of different chemicals, such as growth hormones, and a lot of antibiotics. And when it comes to microbiotics, it's believed that it's one of the main reasons we have so many different bacteria in a lot of different hospitals that are now extremely resistant to microbiotic treatment. 
Not to mention that generally meat also contains quite a lot of foodborne pathogens and can be quite easily contaminated in a lot of other ways. None of which is a problem for cultivated meat. By removing animals from the picture, we actually suddenly don't have to deal with any of these problems. And though it might sound maybe a little bit naive or extremely ideological, quite a lot of people out there think otherwise. There are currently over 60 different startups in existence with quite a lot of them already in the process of developing incredible products. And since meat consumption is only going to be increasing in the next two decades by up to 50%, these startups are actually onto something after all. Okay, but I think most of us are probably not going to be spending $300,000 on a single burger. And so here, the cost is still a pretty big concern, or at least it was until so many startups started to create even more technologies and started to advance the field even further. For example, in 2020, an Indian startup known as Clear Meat claimed to have cultivated chicken meat that only cost about $10, while the slaughtered chicken would actually be a little bit more expensive. In this case, by using a donor chicken, they're able to produce three different types of cells from these chickens, including the muscle cells, the structure cells, and also the fat cells, which are essentially then grown in various bioreactors, kind of similar to how we produce beer. But instead of beer, we get chicken meat. Other startups, like Meatech, or meat tech, I guess, use the idea of bioprinting to create something that has even more structure and thus more texture, with their overall product having a lot more quality, but also slightly more expensive price. But their goal is to have something like 6 euros per kilogram by 2030. But even compared to that burger from 2013, the cost in 2020 was already hundreds of times cheaper. Using the technology they have right now, it would actually cost them just a few hundred dollars to produce something like this. And then we have companies like Eat Just that actually got an approval from countries like Singapore to sell cultured animal products like these eggs you see right here. With 1880 in Singapore becoming the first ever restaurant to actually physically serve cultured meat, with the chicken meal costing approximately $20. Still, I guess maybe a little bit more expensive than, let's say, KFC. But as I mentioned before, the prices are constantly going down. Other startups went even further. They basically went to space. The Israeli Aleph Farms became the first ever startup to produce cultivated meat on the International Space Station and even 3D print it in zero-g conditions, which theoretically means that astronauts might be able to produce their own meat in the future. So if you thought Star Trek replicators might never happen, this particular startup just took us a step closer. And interestingly, all of these advances mostly happened in the last 10 years or so, with all of this basically advancing exponentially. Which is really intriguing because back in 2008, there was a million dollar contest for someone to create fake chicken using cultured meat by the year 2014. Nobody won this back then, but 10 years later, we get this. Not just chicken meatball, but a mammoth meatball. And so let's, I guess, talk a little bit more about this as well. Now, in essence, the technology here is still very similar. It involved cultured cells that were grown on various scaffolds to create something that resembled meat with the right texture. But the difference in this case was the types of cells that they used for this particular idea. Because as I mentioned, there are so many different startups already, and because all of them are pretty much competing with one another, the company decided to introduce an extra step. They basically introduced a genetic engineering technique where they took some of the publicly available DNA structure that was discovered in various mammoths, and then inserted this DNA structure, along with the additional inserts from the elephant DNA, into the cells from a sheep, and specifically into the muscle cells, that could then be multiplied to produce all of the necessary meat. And so by using those muscle cells, this would give this meat very similar structure and very similar texture to typical meat we eat. And in order to give it that unique meat taste, they decided to insert the protein known as myoglobin that was discovered in the DNA of those mammoths whose frozen bodies were found in the last few decades. And if for some reason one day you want to actually try this yourself, or at least find that DNA from the mammoth, all of this is publicly available in the National Library of Medicine, with a specific link right here that's also in the description below. And so anyway, myoglobin from a mammoth, additional DNA from the African elephant, inserted into a sheep cell, eventually resulted in these very unique cells. Although not necessarily truly mammoth cells, these were really hybrid cells. And once all of this was cultured into enough material, it was then turned into an actual physical meatball. Apparently cooked to perfection and turned into this culinary masterpiece. Or basically what you see right here. Now this does look sort of interesting and maybe kind of delicious, but this is really not made for consumption, at least for now. 
First of all, obviously nobody really knows if it's safe yet. Second of all, because this was already in a museum for a while, it might have gone bad by now. And third of all, even though cultivated meat is already legal in some places, cultivated genetically modified meat is definitely not. Nevertheless, according to the scientists behind this, when the meatball was cooked, it did smell kind of like the crocodile meat. But how exactly it tastes, nobody knows. And we're probably not going to know for a while or ever. Because the point here was to really draw attention to the idea that this technology is possible and that cultured meat is definitely becoming a reality and possibly even a better reality. At some point potentially cheaper, definitely more sustainable and environmentally friendly. Although I guess the more eccentric point they're trying to make here is that this meat will never be the same as regular meat. It's always going to be that extreme meat that some people might like and might really enjoy, but quite a lot of people probably will not. Nevertheless, because this is a design meat and can actually be created in a lot of different ways, both the taste and the nutritional value can be modified as needed. In other words, imagine having a meatball that's basically designed to be extremely healthy, but also actually tastes the way you want it to taste. And in some sense, this does sound kind of exciting. But there's also obviously the question of ethics. First of all, is it even ethical to create something that's already extinct? Second of all, even though this is cultured meat produced from various cells, was it ever alive? Was it ever killed? This might not matter for most of us, but this might matter for some people that are, for example, religious. In certain religions, animals have to be killed in a very specific, respectful way before they can be consumed. Ironically, both the Jewish culture and the Muslim culture already have an answer to that. It really depends where the original cells came from. If the animal whose cells were used to produce this was killed in a way that's appropriate, in that case, Jewish or Muslim people can definitely consume this. But that's maybe going a little bit too far. Let's focus on baby steps. When exactly is this going to be affordable and possibly available near you? Well, at the moment, you can definitely get a lot of this in places like Singapore and maybe even certain places in Europe because apparently this meatball right now is in Netherlands. But it will definitely take some time before all of this becomes extremely affordable, even cheaper than regular meat, and it will probably take a few years before all this is approved by the local authorities. And so the projected year for when this might actually become a reality in a lot of countries is maybe 2030. So at least seven years from now. And by the way, if you're watching this in 2030, how are those meatballs? Is it as good as promised? Either way though, a pretty intriguing, somewhat clickbaity approach to promote the idea of cultured meat. And though I personally don't really mind it, as a matter of fact, I'm sort of fascinated by stuff like this, not a lot of people are going to be happy with all of this, especially once it becomes a reality. But chances are we're not going to be eating mammoth meat. As a matter of fact, even that meatball is not really mammoth meatball either. This is a hybrid that includes a partial gene from the mammoth, but also includes things from the African elephant and of course common sheep. And so I guess time will tell where all of this goes. For now, I guess, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining general membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow. And, oh, I almost forgot, this startup is also making the world's rarest dumplings. Now that I would like to try. Anyway, bye-bye. Okay, I'm gonna go get a non-mammoth meatball because I got super hungry making this video.